And we have some breaking news coming up for you. Maldives, the island uh, in India's neighborhood, has now summoned Indian ambassador Akhilesh Mishra after an Indian member of parliament, Dr. Subramaniam Swami, suggested that India must invade the Maldives if election rigging happens there. My colleague Sudan Sibyl joins us live. Sudan, as I understand it, Dr. Swami was not speaking on behalf of anyone. He was expressing his personal opinion as a member of parliament. Why then this very strong move of the Indian ambassador being summoned? Well, we have seen relationship between Maldives and India. They haven't been uh, uh, going towards a positive trajectory. And then the statement came uh, uh, by Subramanyam uh, Swami saying that India should invade. And the statement, uh, he tweeted basically uh, the statement. And the statement came immediately after he met the former president of Maldives, Mr. Nasheed, in Colombo. And India was quick to dissociate itself from the statement, coming out with a statement. Then he coming, came out with a statement saying it does not reflect the official policy of the government of India. But we know the, how the situation has been planning out between India and Maldives. The Maldives even wanted two helicopters with the Indian government gifted to them to be taken back to India. But of course, reports now coming in saying that they can, the, the two helicopters can be can be stationed there for a few months, uh, next few months. But uh, we have seen Maldives drifting towards China and increased Chinese presence uh, in uh, the island country, in bank in the middle of Indian Ocean, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the busy sea routes connecting Africa with the uh, uh, rest of the Southeast Asia. So Maldives is an important country when it comes to geopolitical strategy, not only of India, but of China, but this statement, of course, uh, Maldives not taking it very positively. The the uh, uh, the politicians they are also commenting on the statement, and the statement coming just before Maldives go to goes to elections. Remember, uh, the elections will take place on 23rd of September. Right. And before that, not only India but many other Western countries have been saying that election should be free and fair. Right, uh, Siddhant, uh, uh, it's interesting that it's Dr. Subramaniam Swami who's made that statement on, in, a, in a tweet. And this at a time when you, as you just mentioned, the helicopter, uh, the helicopters that the government of India gifted to the Maldives, there was talk of them being returned, but now that, has, uh, that situation has stabilized. So in the best case scenario, Dr. Swami got his timing wrong. In the worst case scenario, he was fishing in troubled waters. Has he bothered to explain why he made a statement like this? Well, he hasn't said anything. Uh, India, of course, uh, was quick to react on it. He has been um, uh, not commenting on the statement. He made a tweet after meeting the president, former president Nasheed, and then he has been lying low. We do expect some kind of statement do coming soon from Subramaniam Swami when he comes back to Delhi. But as of now, he has been quiet. Uh, only government of India reacting, saying that it's not the official policy, but relations, it, it's going to uh, impact the relations, which are already not uh, in a positive trajectory, coming at the background of increased ch uh, Chinese presence in the island nation that is geostrategically placed in the Indian Ocean. Right. Uh, Sudan Sibyl, thanks very much for that update and, and for putting this story in perspective. It is a very, very delicate balancing act that the government of India is trying to do in the Maldives at a time when the Chinese presence there is increasing. But the government's official position remains the same, that it's not going to interfere in the domestic affairs of a country. The question of invading it doesn't arise at all. This is uh, Member of Parliament Subramanim Swami's personal opinion that he expressed through a tweet. Let's now take you through the story uh, that we headlined this evening, an idea for the future that India is exploring and toying with, an idea that India, India has put into action. In a breakthrough move, India has successfully conducted its first test flight, partially powered by biofuel. A budget passenger carrier has conducted the test flight from the northern Indian city of Dehradun to its capital, New Delhi. A concoction of biofuel powered one of the turbine engines of this plane. The Directorate General of Civil Aviation, the DGCA, that is the Aviation Watchdog in India, allowed this flight test to be conducted with 25% biofuel, 75% of ATF, that's Aviation Turbine Fuel, what is commonly used in aircraft. This was to test the flight. 20 officials of the jet fuel project traveled on the flight from Dehradun to Delhi. It was received by key cabinet ministers and the airline's top management at Delhi's Indira Gandhi International Airport. Terminal 2. The development assumes significance as high air turbine fuel prices have hit India's domestic airline sector badly, with all the major players now reporting losses for the first quarter of 2018 19.
Currently, fuel prices constitute 40 to 50 percent of the overall operations cost of domestic airlines, and these prices are prohibitively high. India's ATF prices are, in fact, amongst the highest in the world due to the addition of state taxes and other levies. And fuel is not under the GST ambit. Besides, the success of the flight will pave the way for further testing and aid in fulfilling the central government's move to curtail India's dependence on crude oil imports. It will also help reduce the cost of air travel by about 20%, but this is a very small yet significant beginning. Meanwhile, fuel prices, the traditional fuel prices in India have touched a new high with diesel just a few paise away from touching the 70 rupee mark. Diesel prices in the national capital region are at 69 rupees 46 paise a litre, which has never been seen before. Petrol prices touching 78, uh, close to the 78 mark, at 77 rupees 91 paise per litre, but lower than its previous high of 78 rupees 43 paise per litre. According to state-owned fuel retailers, diesel price was hiked by 14 paise, petrol by 13 paise per litre in a single day. Do not forget that Delhi is the cheapest in terms of fuel prices among the metro cities. The financial capital of Mumbai is still paying the highest. That is because of the state taxes. Locals pay up to 85 rupees 33 paise per litre for petrol in Mumbai, which is lower than its previous high of more than 86 rupees. Diesel is touching its highest mark in Mumbai too at almost 74 rupees a litre right now. Fuel prices have shown no sign of relaxation since August 16 after the rupee dipped to its lowest value against the greenback. In the last 12 days, in fact, petrol prices have risen by 0.77 paise per litre and diesel by 0.74 paise. In fact, uh, the center currently levies a total of 98 rupees 48 paise per liter of excise duty on petrol and more than 15 rupees per liter on diesel. State owned oil firms had in mid June last year dumped the 15 year practice of revising rates on the 1st and 16th of every month in favor of daily price revisions. When we hear about Uber, the first thing that most people think of or associate it with is a cab. But that could change soon because the company is going to make a major strategic move and shift its focus from cars to electric bikes. That leads to an interesting question though. Why is Uber moving away from cars when the company is thriving on the model of cab sharing? According to Uber CEO, users would make more frequent, shorter journeys in the future. He in fact said, and I'm I'm quoting, during rush hour, it is very efficient for a one-ton hulk of metal to take one person 10 blocks. He also added that short-term, financially, maybe it's not a win for us, but strategically, long-term, we think that is exactly where we want to head. In the short term, the move is definitely going to financially hit Uber that reported losses of $4.5 billion in 2017. But the company believes that short-term losses are important to achieve long-term goals. At least that's what they're telling the world. Uber is pretty firm on its decision to move to electric scooters. In fact, it has collaborated with a number of bike companies. For instance, its jump electric bikes are already available in eight American cities. They will soon be introduced in Berlin as well. That's not all. Uber has also signed deals with the electric scooter company Lime to expand its business of electric two-wheelers. How Uber's new move benefits the company is something that we're yet to see, but it will definitely be cost-effective for commuters. What if you were to find that your partner or someone in your family is spying on you? reading all your messages, tracking all your moves, your locations. It does sound creepy, but it's happening with a lot of people and they don't know about it and it's happening pretty easily with the help of spy apps, which are available readily on your phone. Take a look at this report. Beware smartphone users. Someone could secretly be spying on you, a friend, an employer, or even a suspicious partner. Believe it or not, plenty such apps are available online and they make spying easier than ever before. Are you wondering how? Well, these are not traditional spy apps. These are like normal 
child tracking apps or the app that you use to track your mobile phone or uh, this can be apps that you use to say sync your sms across devices these apps can also be used for malicious purposes you can also install those apps on your spouse's phone or your partner's phone and then do the same features to spy on your partner so even though these apps are not overtly designed to spy they do double up as snooping apps that's scary and thus arises the need of being careful of apps which disguise as something else but note that there are apps that are designed with a clear purpose to spy in addition to this of course there are spy apps like M spy and flexi spy or spy human which are built to spy on someone like employee or your children now we come to the most important question just how dangerous are these apps they can do everything they can track your sms they can track your location they can track your every activity on the phone that's not all you'd be surprised to know some anti theft apps are also used to spy on others such as find my phone these spy apps are operating openly and audaciously which makes one wonder why are these unethical apps not taken down from app stores by companies like google and apple well the reason is because this dual nature of these apps these apps are completely legitimate that's why anti spyware apps don't detect them or flag them it can all be pretty tricky and complicated so our advice to you is to be a little more careful when you choose to share your phone with others and most importantly never share your phone password with anyone <laughs>